This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, April the 15th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. April the 15th. Hope your taxes are done. Actually, I think you have to the 16th since the 15th is on a Sunday. Well, we had a stormy day across the Central Plains. There's a look at the Storm Prediction Center storm reports for yesterday and through this morning and a very, very stormy day. Lots of damage from the storms. Fortunately, have not seen any reports uh, of very many injuries and no reports of uh, fatalities. But of course, as uh, we see the dawning of a new day, there will be uh, assessments going on. So we uh, certainly give a prayer for those folks and hope that uh, everything comes out okay. This morning, we're seeing moisture increasing across the southeastern United States and across central Alabama. There's a look at uh, Tuscaloosa. You can see some of those low clouds. But when you look up at Coleman, uh, camera having a little trouble focusing there, but still you can see that the sky mostly uh, clear. Across the central United States, we have a surface low pressure system located over Nebraska with a trailing front down into uh, central Texas and actually down into the Rio Grande Valley. A warm front across the Great Lakes area, and so it's very mild across the eastern half of the country. And you can see that our surface high that has been affecting us has finally moved off into the Atlantic. It was located over the Outer Banks yesterday. In the upper atmosphere, we're dealing with this very uh, deep trough over the Rockies that is uh, beginning to eject out and will uh, be responsible for severe weather a little further to the northeast today. Across central Alabama this morning, temperatures generally ranging from the mid-60s down to the upper 50s, so uh, kind of a broad range of temperatures across the area this morning. And on radar, we still have a lot of storms going on out in Oklahoma and Kansas uh, with some severe weather still occurring out there. QPF-wise, or the uh, rainfall for the next five days, most of that for central Alabama coming around uh, the Monday-Tuesday time frame, and then we have another shot coming into the Friday-Saturday time frame, but that's beyond this particular period of time. Storm Prediction Center's uh, outlook for severe weather today, as you might expect, uh, the focus is going to be across uh, the upper Great Lake, or uh, pardon me, the Western Great Lakes uh, in a vicinity of places like northwestern Illinois, parts of Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, with a slight risk from that area all the way down into the Houston, or practically the Houston area down into East Texas. Day two, that area shifts uh, and becomes less def uh, less defined in terms of slight and not moderate, and uh, for uh, parts of uh, the Ohio, uh, the state of Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and New York, and the uh, eastern Great Lakes area. So a very stormy, stormy weather system across the country. The 060 GFS model run shows for today at uh, midday. This is 1 p.m. 18Z. You can see the uh, the closed low up over South Dakota and Nebraska with the trailing trough back down into uh, West Texas. And that, of course, uh, underneath that, you see a surface low um, on, on the um, state boundary between Iowa and Nebraska and South Dakota there, uh, with the front stretching down into the Texas area. By uh, And by the way, let's uh, take a look very quickly at uh, the HRR model. And there's a look at the uh, Cape values. And of course, you can see why they're outlooking a moderate risk over parts of uh, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, Cape values uh, getting up into the two or anywhere from 1,500 to nearly 3,000. And then the helicity values or the uh, from zero to three kilometers, uh, those helicity values also uh, up in that area, uh, very high on the order of, and of course, 150 is one of the kind of the break points there. So the value is very high up in that area. So certainly another possibility of not as bad as we had yesterday, but certainly uh, another uh, round of severe weather going on. So that takes us to Monday, and uh, the uh, the the closed low become opens up, and uh, of course the trough still stretches back, taking its time uh, as it as it lags back. And what that means is it's dragging a front down into our area, so uh, that puts a pretty good chance for showers and thunderstorms. Actually, I think in the likely category for. Uh, for Monday across uh, much of the southeastern U.S., Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, M Mississippi, Louisiana. I do believe that the severe weather threat is not as, you know, is, is marginal at this point for us, perhaps even a little stronger down along the uh, Gulf Coast area where they had sea text. 
Moving out to Tuesday, we see that the trough is still slow to come across, so we can see the reflection of it in the lower Mississippi River Valley, and that indeed means that Tuesday is going to be another day where I think showers and thunderstorms will be occurring, but they will should be ending as the day wears on. And uh, interesting to note that uh, the European is in pretty good agreement with uh, the, the GFS in terms of the position on uh, Tuesday for uh, the weather to be moving on out. We go into a more zonal flow on Wednesday, so no real uh, temperature change with the front that comes through, but the rain uh, moves on out. Another surface low up over the western Great Lakes. By Thursday, we're beginning to, uh, uh, where well, we're still in a zonal pattern, but, and so no weather for us, uh, kind of a, a, a sunny day, but we see now the development on Friday of another substantial trough coming in uh, from uh, the Dakotas there and uh, from Canada. And that, of course, means that we'll see some more moisture and, and the possibility. Now, it looks like for us, Friday is going to be one of those days where it's a little iffy, uh, but we're probably introducing a chance for showers. That trough steepens or deepens quite a bit as we see a much stronger northwesterly flow, which that's going to pave the way for a cooler uh, Saturday. And of course, that means also, it looks like, as we were saying yesterday, the possibility that we'll see some rain along with that. And the GF, uh, the G, this is the GFS, but the European, not in bad agreement. Uh, a little bit of differences. Uh, if you notice on the uh, GFS, the surface low is about over West Virginia, but on the European, the surface low is a little faster. It's out uh, into uh, eastern Pennsylvania primarily. So a little bit of differences in there, but still a fairly good agreement, especially when you consider we're getting out into you know, 160 to 168 hours out. And then finally, on Sunday, a week from today, we see a pretty substantial trough over the east coast. And uh, with that, uh, we'll be seeing thicknesses fall. Look at the 540 line coming down into the northeastern Tennessee area, and uh, certainly that's going to mean some cooler temperatures with highs in the 60s. Boy, won't that be nice. And let's go out real quick. Uh, this is voodoo, I know, but we're out into Monday, and just notice Monday is also going to be a bit of a cool day, so a nice coolish look to it. Now, extending out into voodoo considerably, we have uh, an interesting pattern around the 27th that is likely to bring us uh, some weather and perhaps uh, the possibility with that low over Texas, that upper low over Texas, the possibility that we might even see something in the way of severe weather. And then finally, uh, the ridge is big when you get to the end of the month. And that's certainly, uh, like we were showing yesterday, and the trend is what we're looking for here, that certainly looks like a very warm pattern with perhaps maybe even, you know, a summerish look and the possibility of uh, scattered showers. But uh, that's way out into voodoo. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Weather Extreme video. I expect James Spann to be back with the next edition first thing Monday morning. In the meantime, I hope your Sunday is a good one, and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.